Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. This is Femi Julo Daniel and welcome to Femi Julo's Beast. And if you're here for the first time, please do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button down below and that would be really appreciated. I, it only shows you are nice and a kind person. Kindly support this channel and help us to grow. I welcome you all. And today, on today's program is a continuation of this segment I titled Financial Common Sense. And I'll be discussing something about wealth distribution across all races. This was uh, an, uh, a survey that was done and it's on the verified uh, website. So because you know nowadays you need to be sure of information you give to people out there not all information are verifiable but this was carried out in the US and what other nation could have been used as we are all aware that America is a multiracial nation and it's a perfect example to be used for such a survey because you have people from all races on the surface of the earth and america is a nation this formed based on people migrating from all part of the world africa from asia from latin america from europe in all part of the world so america is what i call the, the world nation because every race could be found there so there was a survey that was carried out among all the races before i go ahead i want to um clarify something the essence of sharing this is for uh information first of all and also it is to awaken your consciousness and it's not in any way to stir up any kind of negative um, feeling towards a particular race or to feel a kind of envy towards anyone from a particular side or particular race. No, no, no. That is not the essence of this. The essence is to make us learn from one another. And I mean what are the positive things being done by a particular race that the other races are not doing you get me so that is the essence of bringing this out so that we can learn and start doing some things especially as black family because uh it is quite uh insensitive and at the same time thought provoking to any critical thinker out there if you are from the black family especially so what are the things we need to start doing consciously to break some negative cycles and it's time it's time we have such a conversation and it's time we start taking note of those things and being deliberate about it and doing something about it in order to protect the future generations because there has been a particular trend and that trend has to stop i will read the basic things i've highlighted in the survey then i will give my submission on it later so this report was on disparities in wealth by race and ethnicity in the 2019 survey of consumer finances this was done in america like i said and it was released in, on September 28, 2020. New data from the 2019 Survey of Consumer Finances, SCF, show the long-standing and substantial wealth disparities between family in different racial and ethnic groups. Where little change since the last survey in 2016. The typical white family has eight times the wealth of the typical black family hmm. and five times the wealth of the typical hispanic family let me go to the chat below 
which shows everything in pictorial form uh, we can all read up i will put the link to the website in the description box below let's do that at our own time that's quite a lengthy one so i don't want to bore you with too much reading but let's analyze this picture the median net worth of each race is stated here perhaps this is done between certain numbers from each races you know before such surveys are carried out they send out questionnaires and from that they collate and they are able to bring out this uh, re result median net worth the white you can see there and these are the uh, the the net worth in in dollars thousands of dollars for an average white family this is what the net worth of a, an average black family so the picture itself speaks clearly so we can see the difference these are the net worth in thousands of us dollars that is for an average white family with a net worth of maybe close to 200,000 this is what an average black family is worth that's the net worth it's not even up to 50,000 so we can see it here for hispanic which is the next it's a little, little bit higher and other races which involve uh, i think i skipped that portion the other races are so all the other families include those identified as asian american indian alaska native native hawaiian pacific islanders and other races so the mean net worth you can see this close to a million an average white with a million this is what an average black has and before i go further um that means if you put 10 uh, black families together and you range their mean mean net worth that is you calculate their total net worth together so you find the what is the average from an african family is exponentially low because what is the let's even think about this let's think about this if you have a millionaire let's say black family that is a millionaire with a net worth of um, let's say a million dollars and you have nine others with average net worth of let's say five thousand dollars the question is as black black family without even going further have we done well for ourselves because there's so much disparity the larger percentage do not have enough so that is where why we are having such a statistics like this you can see that's why we're having such a statistic like this that is no matter how many millionaires we have meaning we don't have enough but for an average white person and that takes me to another thing when i came here i see companies that have existed for over 100 years these are businesses that were started as a family business and one thing i observe is there is always an arrangement for wealth transfer from one generation to the other meaning that as parents they are always thinking of the next generation to take over that business is interesting right it's something i've seen here i can name some companies here that are over 100 years over 50 years and they started as family business so the one generation is always thinking about the next one how to transfer the wealth to the next generation is common among the white folks and we as black family cannot i think enough of the the blame games and excuses that we've given in the time past and time to seed up and start doing what we need to do to help the upcoming generation because i realized that what we've been able to do over time is passing the buck and continue that and i will call it negative trend that has not really helped us 
to grow and to transfer wealth to the next generation. Even though some of our black folks are successful in their businesses, but how sustainable are those businesses? How many of black families' businesses do we have that have gone through different phases as regards wealth transfer and is still in existence to this present day? How many? That's the question we need to ask. So we can all say, okay, we, can, we are uh, enterprising, we do businesses and all. But do we take note of all these things that I'm talking about? Do we try to make sure this thing is sustained by the next generation? That's, that's, that's the question. What are we doing to make sure that our children who are the next generation or have something to start life with? and to keep it going from there how many or it, is it all about living for today and um, not really paying attention to how can i make life more meaningful for my children or the next generation how many times do we think of that let's be very frank with ourselves so i said it earlier it is to provoke something positive in us and if you know how tough it has been for you to get to where you are, I think we need to start giving this thing a critical thought. In my growing up uh, years, I was made to understand that once you study, get out of school, get employed, um, become successful, then the responsibility lies on you to take care of your parents and don't get me wrong i'm not saying there's anything wrong about taking care of your parents but we have shifted the focus and the focus should be about the next generation which are the children what are we planning to hand over to them but that is not always in the equation and it is all about during our active years of working whether you have business or not during our active years of working we are busy trying to take care it's more like always looking back looking back putting all resources into things that or major part of our resources into things that shouldn't be and leaving out what should be more important which is the next generation the children and we leave them out of the equation and the cycle continues the cycle of struggle continues then when they grow up we all sit back when we become retired, when we could no longer work, we sit back and expect these children, rather than them having something to kickstart their life and, you know, pushing forward, you know, which is more like progressive in nature. Rather, there is a burden of duty being placed on these children and they start to look back, oh, I am compelled to take care of my parents while the parents have handed nothing to them. And the, the excuse has always been that, okay, I trained you, you, you lived in my house, I gave you my food, da, 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 da. And we see that as the only duty we owe them. Uh, I'm here to, with a different view entirely because I feel if we are able to bring a child into the world it is not of that child's will or the responsibility is on us to make sure we do all we can to make that child successful so that is my own view and i strongly believe in it that we need to start building up something for these children and make sure that they have something solid to kickstart their life when they grow up that is my standpoint. You can have a different opinion. But I've shared my opinion. And if you have a counter opinion, you can drop in the comment section. I will want to draw the curtain here today. Like I said, it's a series. This is just to engage our subconscious so that we will be awakened and start to think along that line. Let's think progressively. 
and not retrogressively, like that is pulling all our resources and energy on things below the order of priorities. Let's prioritize. Let's know. Let's list them. What are our priorities? That is, those are the future of the children that we are raising. And even if you don't have children and you plan to have one, you don't need to wait for the kids to come. We start planning from now because some of this information, we are not exposed to them. That's why we are not able to make some decisions at early stages. I thank you for your time and I want to remind us to subscribe to this channel if you have not. And do not forget to hit the like button. See you by the next video and take good care of yourself. Bye for now.